You know, in Genesis, we can read of famines that was caused by severe drought that had come upon the land. In Genesis 12, verse 10, it says, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to live there a while because of the famine. Now famines were something that took place quite often in the ancient world. It took place quite often. And it was a time that created scarcity. It was a time that created hardship. It was a time that was very difficult for people. Now, this famine that Abraham experienced was not the only famine that came upon the land of Israel. We see the same thing repeated again in Genesis 26, verse 1. It says, now there was a famine in the land, besides the earlier famine in the time of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines near Gerar. And as well, we see another famine in the land at the time when Joseph was the prime minister of Egypt. That's in Genesis 41, verse 57. And all the countries came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was so severe in the entire world. Now every time there was a famine in the ancient world, especially in Palestine, that is the land of Canaan, the patriarchs would always be compelled to go to Egypt. Yet going to Egypt, we see later on, was exactly what set up the slavery of the people of Israel. Each one of those famines drove the patriarchs to the land of Egypt. And because they went to Egypt, ultimately Israel, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, the people of Israel were in captivity. The choice to go to Egypt, to look to Egypt for answers, rather than trusting the great God, is what set up the slavery and the captivity of the people of Israel. So some of the choices that people make because of those conditions, those hardships that we face here and now, never really know what type of conditions that we are setting up for those who will come after us. Instead of staying in the land of Canaan, instead of staying in the land of Egypt and trusting God, instead of trusting Him to meet all of their needs, they went looking for answers in Egypt. Egypt, the epitome of idolatry, the epitome of all those things that were opposed to the great God. People were compelled to go outside of where God had placed them. They should have stayed in the land of Canaan and trusted in the great God. But instead, they believed that by going to Egypt, by going somewhere else, looking elsewhere for the answers, they thought that they would find all that they needed. They should have stayed where God had placed them. Even in times of famine, in times of drought, in those dry seasons. There are times when dry seasons come into our lives. Each and every one of us have experienced a dry season individually and collectively. And it is when dry seasons come upon us, especially in the life of a congregation, in the life of a church, when we go through a dry season and there appears to be a famine, so often people look elsewhere. Instead of staying where God had placed them, as Abraham and Isaac and Jacob should have done, instead of staying where God has placed them, they go elsewhere. They return to Egypt. They feel the answers might be somewhere else, but instead of staying where God put them, they go elsewhere. Instead of trusting God that He would make all things work out, especially in the dry seasons of our lives. You see, dry seasons are actually opportunities in disguise. There have been many dry seasons. Each and every one of us have been in a dry season in our lives. Where our resources seem to be stretched thin. And even in the life of congregations, there are dry seasons. There are times when resources aren't as abundant as we would like. When opportunities don't seem to be as open as we would hope them to be. When our resources dwindle. When numbers seem to shrink. But instead of staying where God has placed us so often, we look elsewhere. 
We go to Egypt. But you see, dry seasons are actually opportunities. Because it is in dry seasons that fires can start. Fires of all sizes start during dry seasons. All it takes is a spark. All it takes is one spark to ignite an entire forest of fire. Look at the nation that we are in right now. Look at the times that we're in as a nation. We are in a dry season. Our nation is withering. It seems that there are very few blessings descending upon this nation from heaven. But it isn't because God will not give them. It is because the people will not receive them. They're preoccupied with other things. Their minds are in Egypt. They're looking somewhere else for the answers. Our nation as a whole is in that condition. Our nation is a nation of dry and withering trees. And in so many places, our churches are dry and withering trees. Because we put other things before the great God. Instead of our hearts and our minds focused upon the person of Jesus, we're mesmerized and captivated by other things. And whenever we don't have what we want, where we are, we want to go looking in another place. You see, that's what Abraham did. That's what Isaac did. That's what the patriarchs did. They went looking for answers somewhere else. Instead of staying where God had placed them in the land where God had promised to bless them. They went to Egypt and they set up their entire descendants to be in captivity. They should have stayed where God put them, where God had placed them. Where God's blessings were said to come down upon them. We can find ourselves individually and collectively. The church right now is in a dry season. Yet it is again in those dry seasons when the spark of revival can, and renewal can be ignited. Look at the nation that we're in. It is spiritually dry. The people are virtually kindling. Their spiritual lives have been drained. Their minds are on other things. The people are like dry trees. And all it takes is one spark. That's all it takes. A dry tree will go up in flames much quicker than a green tree. And his people out there, just as those trees are actually thirsty and need water, people need Jesus. They need to know him. And whether they realize it or not, whether they recognize it or not, the condition, that dryness that they are in, the answer to it is Christ. To set them ablaze for our Lord and our Savior. To let them be consumed with the fire of the Holy Spirit. All it takes is one spark. All they need to see is one Christian who is on fire for Christ to set the whole nation ablaze with the love of our God, to be consumed with the love of Jesus, to be filled with the desire to know Him and to share Him with those around us, to be that spark is what God calls us to be. Whether it's in our local church, or whether it's in our community, or the nation, God has called us to be the sparks that can set off the fire of revival. Every time there has been a revival in the life of a nation, or even in the church, it has come during a dry season, a time when the church seems weak, depleted, without resources, when the fruit of the church seems to be withering on the vine. It is in times like that where just one person, where just one, was willing to place himself in the midst of that dry season. 
and be that spark to ignite revival. All through the history of this nation, the greatest revivals have come in the driest of seasons because it takes so little to ignite it. It takes just a passion for Christ to tell others about Jesus. To let others see the flame of the fire that burns within us. Christ calls on us. Christ calls on us to be that spark of revival for our nation, for our churches. Not to go looking for answers elsewhere. Not to be like Abraham and Isaac. To be compelled to go looking into Egypt. That wasn't the...